Hey, what's up guys? Chad here with the Reptile Rangers. Now we're at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center again today, and we're going to talk about common reptile problems, episode number seven. Okay. But before we get into that, right in that bottom corner, right there is our subscriber button. Make sure you hit that and we appreciate you doing so and following along week after week after week. So let's get right into this. All right. Common reptile problems episode number seven is going to be scale rot. Okay. Now let's start with the basics. Bailey and come here real quick. All right. So when we're talking scale rot, now of course this is for a snake and for a snake, if you will hold, let's see if we can get this done as best we can. Okay. So the belly scales, as you can see, belly scales. All right. If you see right here, right there is yeah, the cloaca opening. From the cloaca opening to the head is called the ventral scales. From the cloaca or the vent to the base of the tail, those scales are called the subcaudal scales. Okay? Now, when we talk about scale rot, scale rot only affects the belly scales, ventral scales. If there's issues going on with the sides or the back where the, where the spinal crest is, that's not scale rot. It's just something else. Could be bacterial infection, fungal infection, could be the same thing. But classified as scale rot only affects the belly scales. Okay? Bailin, here you go, son. <coughs> now, when we start talking about scale rot, there's it's it's pretty simple as to what causes scale rot, generally speaking. Okay? Doesn't matter if it's a cage like this or if it's a cage like this. Now granted, this is obviously too small, we know that, but the whole thing is that scale rot, generally speaking, comes from unsanitary housing conditions, okay? So generally speaking, scale rot is gonna happen from, like I said, unsanitary conditions, but more primarily from being in wet or moist bedding way too much, okay? Now, we understand, some folks do, some folks don't. Hopefully, this helps to understand. A lot of folks preach humidity. Yes, they do need certain levels of moisture for keeping you know, things easier for them to shed, from keeping the throat, the mouth, the eyes moist, you know, things like that. Instead of it drying out, organs drying out, tissue drying out, scales drying out, whatever the case may be. There is importance to moisture, but the problem is, is in closed settings, it's not just moisture. It's stagnant, moist air, which builds up bacteria, builds up fungus, builds up a lot of issues. With too much humidity, too little humidity, generally speaking, you have a shedding problem. You might end up with a little dry lung or dry respiratory. But with too much moisture, you've got respiratory infection, scale rot, fungal infections, bacterial infections. There's tons of issues that can come from too much humidity. See, understand in the wild, these animals have their climate, but then they also have microclimates, okay? So, and that's the problem when folks are building a habitat, as it were, in the wild, when we talk about bioactive ecosystems, okay, and I love building bioactives. We do it all the time for customers that are buying pets like dart frogs and you know, crested geckos and other such species that do well in captivity in bioactive habitats, spiders or uh, tarantulas, things like that. But understand, there may be wet areas, a lot of wet areas inside of the rainforest and jungle but they're also going to have areas of dry that they can get out of the moist moisture. They can get out of the moisture on the ground and get to a dry, warm, sunny area. Well, inside of a 20-gallon tank, 40-gallon tank, 55-gallon tank, that's really hard to accomplish having moist areas and dry areas too without everything becoming moist. Okay. Scale rot comes from, generally speaking, sitting in moist bedding far too long. Think of bed sores in humans. They're laying in moisture or feces or whatever the case may be. They're just laying there for far too long in bacteria-filled substance, okay? Something. So that's how scale rot happens. And yes, it, generally speaking, starts from incorrect uh, housing, incorrect ecosystem. Generally speaking, either 
unclean, unsanitary conditions, or from way too much moisture being put into the habitat. All right, now, dealing with scale rot. <clears throat> There's many different ways you can deal with scale rot. Generally speaking, most of the time, yeah, you should seek some professional help. SSD cream works great, okay, but that requires a vet prescription. A lot of the times you can deal with scale rot with things like fungal foot treatments. But again, I'm not going to tell you to treat this at home because if you don't do this correctly or if it's not treated by and looked at by somebody professionally, you can absolutely mess your animal up, okay? Whether it's snake, lizard, whatever the case may be. Okay? This is the signs of kind of what you're looking for. It could start off as just a little spot, almost like a little scuff. But what it is, is it's infected underneath the scale. It's infection that's gotten underneath the scale, bacteria or fungal. You can do things like betadine, peroxide, neosporin, antibiotic ointment. Sometimes in the early stages that can work. Yes, absolutely. But again, if it gets too far, then it will literally start eating the flesh. Think of necrosis, all right? So it's kind of like this. It starts getting much, much worse, okay? And then obviously if it's not treated correctly, then it continues to get worse and continues to get worse and continues to get worse. Now, I have seen <clears throat> over the years where called early enough, taken completely off of all bedding, put in a dry environment for a while, and it heals up kind of on its own. But that's not a guarantee, okay? And again, Usually SSD cream does the best, fastest jobs, great stuff. But like I said, it requires uh, either a doctor or a vet prescription. That's an actual prescribed antibiotic cream. So it's a little bit harder to get a hold of. Again, I'm not saying don't go seek veterinary help because you know, if you try and do this on your own, you may absolutely mess up your animal. You may do something incorrectly. You can give something that it, that it should not be given and you can damage or even kill your pet, okay? So this is not a how to treat scale rot episode. I'm just putting out there the things that can treat it, that vets will prescribe, that rehabbers will use, uh, that zoological and museum uh, facilities will use in simple cases of things when they have issues like this, okay? Scale rot can be both bacterial or it can be fungal, okay? Either one can happen. Generally speaking, bacteria happens when you have a scrape or a scratch or there's a surface abrasion of some form that opens a cavity into the, the body itself and then bacteria adheres to that and starts to explore, as it were. All right, fungus can adhere to surfaces and start to eat away. Now, we do know with a lot of water, especially ex excessive moist pens, you'll have fungus build up. You see that mold, mildew, all that other, that's fungus, okay? And when fungus builds up, of course, it's going to adhere to other surfaces. And that, in turn, will cause it to adhere potentially to your snake, lizard, turtle, which would be shell rot, okay? Shell rot can happen from bacterial or fungal infections from the same ways as what we're talking about here. It's just not called scale rot because it's a shell, not scale, when it comes to the actual shell itself. So understand, this is scale rot. <clears throat> just kind of an overview of what to look out for. As you've seen in pictures, like I said, if you really want to avoid scale rot, scale rot doesn't actually happen as often as most people think that it would because as long as the environment is clean and it's dry like it's supposed to be or drier, at least, at least not standing or constant moist bedding that they're never able to get off of, then you're never going to have a problem with scale rot. Hopefully this has been somewhat helpful, at least helping you to prevent scale rot from happening. Okay? Now, this is Chad. We are the Reptile Rangers here at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center. We do appreciate you coming along week after week after week. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, the like button, the bell for notification. Make sure to feel free and get with us and let us know of other things you want us to film about. Our information will be in the description below for those needing to get in touch with us. People call us from all over the country and will send us messages to the YouTube channel from other countries. Always looking for help, advice, however we can, we're happy to do so. We also have the TikTok channel entitled Reptile Rangers. We have the Instagram page, Kernersville Reptile Zoo. We also have the storefront here where we do sell the pets, the equipment, supplies, food, all the goodies for them. So again, we appreciate you coming along with us video after video, week after week after week. We'll either see you here at the zoo or we'll see you on the next episode. Later.